In this video, I have to survive 100 levels from the recent tab, from empty levels to some of the hardest. Also, every time I beat a level, there's a 5% chance that the difficulty will increase, which could end horribly as I only have 3 lives. So let's dive into this. Our first level would be Stereo Madness UFO, which is Stereo Madness but UFO. Shocking, I know. Unlike previous versions in the past, you're able to skip the entire path of the level with ease, besides a choke point halfway through the level. Level 2 would teach me how game modes work, would have been nice to know that earlier. Anyway, this entire tutorial is in Spanish, so I was surprised I was able to make it to the finish without suffering a tragic death. I would finally take all my newfound knowledge into level 3, where I cheese most of the level, as when I came across this row of spikes, I knew what I had to do. Upon skipping the spider portal, however, the level somehow knew what I was up to, warning me to not use that wave portal. I disobeyed anyway, which would let me cross the finish line. With this victory, it made me curious what level 4 would be, which ended up just being a copy of Monster Dance Off. Initially when I began playing the level, I thought this was a remix of the level since I had forgotten what the entire level looked like, but no, this was the level. How forgettable. Level 5 would have the creator somehow paste in multiple coins into a level, which is impossible because players are limited to 3. Unfortunately, these coins would be wrongfully stripped away from me, with the creator giving me a grocery list of tasks. I would have to like and rate this map, and then come back and collect the coins. I was suspicious, but curiosity got the best of me, and it's safe to say I was very disappointed. How could a random person on the internet lie to me? Anyway, if you subscribe, you'll win this limited edition Geometry Dash Battle Royale Premium Pass. No pressure. Level 6 would be more or less the same thing, except it was on a budget and used orbs instead. You probably know the outcome already. After this devastating betrayal, I decided to take a ride outside to help calm my nerves. Electric cars aren't the future, these are. Level 8 would continue these interaction begging shenanigans, with this time the creator offering an icon that is exclusive to 2.2. Now it might be gullible, but that's literally an icon you can unlock in the shop in 2.1. Fortunately, I had learned from my enemy, and didn't fall for free icon axe trap. Come to think of it, I've probably stumbled upon a cult, but let's move on. These 2.2 lines wouldn't end there however, as level 9 would be titled 2.2. The level wouldn't be too interesting. However, the description promises that 2.2 will be released on August 31st this year. However, I'm more of an August 13th believer. Our 10th level is likely someone's first ever creation, as this level is more emotionally moving than the Titanic. There's a single way to die in this level, and that's if you hold at the beginning of the map. The only thing wild about level 11 was how obnoxious these off-screen jumps are. Fortunately, they are bufferable, allowing me to pass this age after a couple attempts. Level 12 would be an entire full-length level with only 5 objects. If you haven't heard, Spunix made a level with only 29 objects a couple months ago, and it was beautiful. As I was about to click the play button, my expectations were through the roof. And just as quickly as they rose, they twice as fast came crashing down. Fortunately, things would get a lot more interesting with level 13. This is Spinborn Robots, which is airborne robots, but everything spins. This map is beyond cursed and tripped me up quite a few times. You never know how truly hard a level can be to read when everything is spinning faster than the clock for 2.2. After a couple of tries, I'd beat this somewhat challenging level, with a very cursed coin on the way out. On the theme of rock top levels, the challenge is literally a copy of the challenge in the basement. I don't even understand why these kinds of people upload these levels to the servers, you aren't fooling anyone. I was even able to land the secret way that only skips like 3 clicks, just because this level is so dry. Level 15 would be a brutal yet interesting wave challenge that fortunately had a skip I can use to get to the end. These hitboxes definitely need some changing. Speaking of hitboxes, this is hitbox experiment, where your cube can float in the middle of the air. This whole level in general is weird, I don't know how to describe it. I would finally receive a break with level 17 being named free level which was one of the first fully finished levels so far, with some pretty appealing structures. The level is very short though, and I don't really see how the name correlates to the gameplay, but I digress. Level 18 would be wild, 
I'm not even sure how this is rated easy when I had to play this level in practice mode just to get the hang of it. I would end up using this dashboard to skip a portion of the level, as I didn't want to play any more frames of this cesspool. I would also barely squeeze into this guy to skip the rest of the level, as the main path was impossible on every single FPS out there. Unbeknownst to me, however, this level would foreshadow my dreaded difficulty increase. While this only went from easy to normal, I knew things would soon get a lot worse. I would open this fresh new difficulty with impossible. Not sure how you can even misspell impossible that badly, but that's besides the point. The level would only be a single jump, allowing me to quickly move on to level 20. Level 20 would be another Spanish challenge, this time with the spider game mode. Now this would be completely fine, if not for the ship mode being used for half the level. Nice spider part. I would then stumble upon a leaked official level coming in 2.2, Finger Dash 2. If you don't believe this is real, I don't know what to tell you. The level is sadly only a preview, so we can't fully see what this masterpiece fully entails, but at least we can appreciate this cutie at the drop. Jokes aside, this level is infinitely better than the official levels, since the creator actually marks where the trolls are. I cannot tell you how many times I've died to this Polargeist orb. I've been literally the entire game, but this is what's preventing me. My luck would only continue to worsen as I would unfortunately roll hard levels only 3 maps later. This completely caught me off guard, and changed the course of the challenge permanently. Skips are going to become more valuable than ever. Level 23 was simply a level named Sync, which had about a second of gameplay, unless you get holding a single dashboard for 10 seconds Sync. Level 24 was an actually playable layout, which caught me so off guard. I was so used to levels like this, that I forgot that I was even playing a game. The level is pretty fun, and has some interesting gimmicks like you hitting your head against these blocks. The level does have a mirror portal however, but since it was used in slam and the levels are pretty similar, I'll let it slide. Level 25 was named my friend's level, and if this was actually your friend's level, then you probably need new friends. Level 26 was one of those whole levels, where the level plays itself or Stereo Madness if you get no play. While the level does look janky at times, and some of the obstacles are definitely a bit stretched, the level is very cool. Level 27 was an orb spawn that had some interesting gameplay to say the least, but I ended up crushing it in only a single attempt. Level 28 was Geometry Dash, which was one of those official level mashups. I usually love these if the levels don't have abysmal balancing. Some of the colors are a bit weird, and it changes up way too suddenly. But it's getting a sequel soon, which is exciting. Can't wait for when Geometry Dash 2 drops. Level 29 was kind of sad, honestly. If you don't know, there's an icon in game that unlocks once a level of yours gets 100 likes. This achievement is strange, and I got creator points before I got 100 likes, but that's besides the point. This poor soul can't unlock this icon, so the ID is on screen. Go help him out. Level 30 is a very strange wave challenge, and it almost looks like it was created by artificial intelligence. Or maybe the creator didn't know how to turn swipe off. Trust me, we've all been there. In level 31, you explore a neat looking castle, or at least I assume off the song. Of course this isn't white space quality, but for a recent tab level, this isn't that bad. Level impossible 33 is kind of worrying. The stage itself is a single spider click, which only took me 2 attempts, but that's not the worrying part. What kind of psychopath makes 33 impossible levels? Seriously, I think this player needs to be investigated. Level 33 was EVW Impossible 5, which is just a few Tartarus jumps and some straight fly. I honestly think EVW has skill issue if this is considered impossible for him. It's also kind of insane how this creator made over 5 of these masterpieces. Shame you made no Cobb Impossible maps. Level 34 was Lost Let Go, which had me trembling at the sight of the name, and it's safe to say the level did not disappoint. The whole way through I was on my tippy toes, looking at what was behind me every second. For example, this spike is rotated, are you not scared? Jokes aside, this cutie appears out of nowhere before a cube gets impaled in the head. This must have been too much for him as a couple seconds later, he leaves me alone. Level 35 was cool thing I made, and I must say this was a very cool thing he made. Level 36 was basically garbage and the title doesn't lie. The level is just a diagonal orb spam and it looks like the creator forgot to turn off swipe. We need more honest marketing in our world nowadays. And on the topic of orb spams, this is level 37, and I don't even want to begin saying this level's name. Seriously, you probably need some help. This challenge is brutal, as you have to hit both the black orb and then quickly hit the pink orb, over and over again. 
unless you do what I did and just skip the black orbs entirely. In general, I don't think I've ever seen a black orb that can't be skipped. This orb is so useless. Level 38 was I spy with my little eye, but bad, and also misspelled. Anyhow, this level isn't that bad, and I wish it was longer since the level was only a couple seconds. But let's travel back in time for a second. Back when Geometry Dash was about to be released, it went under the name of Geometry Jump, and for one of its trailers, it used a song named Ultimate Destruction. We know this because by pausing the video at the first frame and enhancing the image, you get this, which is Ultimate Destruction but misspelled, with level 39 attempting to recreate the level. While the gameplay does stray away from the original quite a few times, the remake isn't that bad and I've seen far worse out there. Level 40 was just a bunch of chompies being spammed, which kind of goes raw, I can't lie. Level 41 was a petition to ban TikTok, fittingly being named TikTok is Trash 2. This message was so important that the creator had to make two levels about it. And yeah, the level talks about how it's brainwashing every user, probably from Newt Newt, and that it needs to burn. The creator then goes on about signing a petition, and Geometry Dash. I don't even have to say why that won't go anywhere. Level 42 is an actually solid level, that I believe with some touch-ups could be a good creation. I even decided to polish up the first part a bit later, which adds a lot more dynamicness to the level. Level 43 was also a well-made creation, a little too well-made. Oh yeah, the level is copied from another map that has over 12 million downloads. It seriously puzzles me what these kinds of creators think they're doing. You aren't fooling anyone, it's just sad. Not as sad as please comment however, where a player says he can't comment anywhere after changing his password. Little does he know however, he can just refresh his login. I can't blame this person for not knowing this however, as the entire account system is poorly put together to say the least. I've made hundreds of accounts over the years and creating one nowadays is still very challenging. Level 45 was don't even try, so of course I tried. This stage was brutal, and I quickly came to regret my decision, wondering if I should use my skip. I would notice a secret way at the start, but I decided to keep pushing. This was where boys became men, until it became too much for me and I opted into using the other route instead. No shame. Level 46 was named Spider Challenge. There was no Spider Challenge. Level 47 was a flag test, and as someone from the United States, this should have been rated Extreme Demon. I would get my first flag, Russia, very quickly. I would also get Japan, but not after asking the meaning of life upon seeing this iteration of the flag. I would end up fluking Belarus as well. This would quickly turn for the worse, however, as when I saw this version of the United Kingdom flag, my day was ruined. After a couple more though, I would die to the final flag, Venezuela, due to them all looking very similar. This was one of the most stressful levels I've ever played, despite only taking two attempts. Level 46 was can't let go if it was a YouTube short. All I need is Newt Newt beneath the level and I'll be good. Jokes aside, this level was very fun to play, and besides some awkward transitions at times, this stage gets my seal of approval. Level 49 was Space Pirates if it was a wave. The creator actually added to the level instead of going the stereo managed by UFO route. Despite being very tight in some areas, I was able to fluke this interesting challenge in only one attempt. Level 50 marked the halfway point of this challenge, which was slowly making me go insane. The level was Sonar but um, which is a copy of Sonar. I don't even know what else to say. Sonar itself has aged pretty well over the years though. Level 51 was a wave challenge, which intrigued me. Over the years, wave has been one of my biggest weaknesses, and I wanted to prove my skill once and for all. While I had a close call here and there, I was able to pass the level first try, which I didn't expect. Level 52 was certainly a level. Due to all these portals, the stage was able to recreate the 2.2 free fly mode in 2.1, albeit in a very janky way. Also, the map doesn't have an end screen, which looks very cursed. Level 53 would have made me spit out my drink if I had one in hand. I hadn't seen a level with decoration for ages, as I'd become completely desensitized to them. While some parts of the level are a bit unbalanced, I think the creator has a bright future ahead of them. Level 54 would also be a very good level, with the creator even having creator points this time. I especially love this part, where the dual swap switch icon has to play. Then everything changed. The moment I saw the name of the level, I knew one of my lives was over. 
nine circles. While I had completed the level beforehand, I haven't played it in years and was very rusty with my skill. Upon opening the level, I knew it was over, as it was only four seconds long. Technically, the level wasn't lying. Level 56 would be dry out if it had zero playtesting. While I would discover a secret way at the start of the level, I decided that I needed to prove myself since don't even try. I would end up completing it, but after an embarrassing length of time. There isn't much to say about level 57, it's a nice map. Level 58 was a stage named Complete, which is an absolute banger. Seriously, you can't argue with. Today I decided... Level 59 was emptier than an Arby's restaurant. Level 60 was a quiz. The first question would be on which official level used the wave game out first. I of course went for blast processing, but apparently, Cycles invented the wave mode. I seriously don't understand the recent tab. In level 61, I would swim in Geometry Cash. In level 62, I would race against two other icons to the finish. The first icon to go was this red icon, which I'm not even sure how he did. Raptop would then hit a diamond blade spam before dying to the air. I would survive by pure luck, reaching the finish line. Level 63 claimed to have an impossible robot. There was no robot. Level 64 was a UFO spam, and didn't line the title like the previous level. This challenge was brutal, almost the limit of UFO spam. But fortunately, I beat it in only two attempts, which I still don't know how I did. I would continue these challenges with one of the first few difficult spider challenges I've come across. The level gets progressively more difficult, with the final click being a near frame perfect. It would take me a while, but I would end up eventually beating it. Level 66 is time machine if it was an actually good level. Seriously, this looks so clean. Unfortunately though, I would end up having loads of fails. As similar to time machine, the difficulty really takes an increase leading up to the end screen. After a stressful dozen of attempts, I would finally complete the stage. Level 67 would be our first of many boss fights to come. This boss is beautiful, and mostly moving even. Ultra violence could seriously be in trouble with this level in the ring, but as massive of a masterpiece as this level was, my long streak of hard levels would come to an end, as I'd finally rolled onto harder levels. This was going to be interesting. Level 68 threw me into an FPS test, where the level would attempt to lag my game as much as possible. The level also seemed to be communist, which was a very warm welcome. Anyway, my computer was pushing through until the 30,000 object area, where my game froze more than the ice age. The only reason this is rated harder is because it will be harder to repair your computer after this level. I then moved on to level 69, which is a single odd looking jump. Now, I'm not sure if this is truly impossible, and my cursive skill shoe has worn off, or this is just a really easy jump, but I can't tell. Level 70 was a level named Echo, which was extremely trippy. It showed this weird optical illusion through its blocks, and not seeing the outlines of the objects made this very difficult to see. Luckily, I would pull through, but I was noticing that levels were beginning to get even harder. Level 71 was a simple swing copter made in 2.1. There isn't much to say here, it plays well. Level 72 was memory gameplay, which is obviously memory oriented. Now the level might look impossible, but upon turning hitboxes on, you can notice how deceiving the gameplay truly is. In level 73, I was thrown into the midst of a heated argument between two blocks. Timmy here claims that he's Timmy, but Better Timmy attempts to commit identity theft, which ends up working as Better Timmy gets the final say. I really don't know what to say about level 74. When you open the map, there's a single frowny phase with the limbo song. Clearly, I needed to investigate, and so I opened up the description. The level name reads Bad Mopin, and the description is salty that Mopin isn't friending him back. I only have 5% of Mopin subscribers and almost never check my friend requests, so this is completely understandable. Even the comments weren't buying it, which is hilarious. Level 75 was my first major roadblock. Remember how I mentioned that I only had 3 lives? Well, Exo Challenge would bring that to 2. As no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't beat this level. With this defeat, I would have to play levels a lot more carefully now. Level 76 was another one of those short stages, this time with X-Step, and level 77 would be a simple way challenge. But those wouldn't be as interesting as level 78. Throughout the stage, you are given 36,000 coins. Now obviously you aren't able to collect them all. 
So you have to use the most optimal strategy to get the most possible. My first strategy was to huddle the two waves together. As I thought I'd collect the most, I would end up getting 5,600 and felt proud of myself. Until I checked the description and the creator had 6,100, which was way ahead of my previous best. I ended up going back into the level, fishing for new strategies in my head until I got the perfect one. If I huddled my ways together, then they'd overlap, losing me hundreds of possible coins. I decided to spread the ways as far apart as possible, which ended up working in my favor as I would get nearly 6,600. While I definitely could have improved that, I'm happy enough with this record. Level 79 was very interesting. In this map, you explore what looks to be ice caverns, and for some odd reason, this really reminds me of a hill climb racing map. I doubt the level was even verified, as despite testing nearly every refresh rate possible, I couldn't figure out how to pass this ending, unfortunately losing another life of mine. Now this whole challenge was on life support. Level 80 was beautiful chaos, and luckily it wasn't that monstrosity. This is an actually solid level and was pretty challenging despite being short. Level 81 was named not a wave, and I can definitely see what the creator meant. These wide waves are very cursed. Level 82 is an extension of the challenge, and surprisingly it was a very good remake. It wasn't a copy either, which is kind of rare for anything related to the challenge. I even tried to perform the secret way and the creator patched it out, so bonus points for that. In level 83 I fought a big fat tomato, which looked nothing like a tomato. I'm more worried for the creator, because if these are the kinds of tomatoes he's eating, I think he needs some help. The boss is actually very challenging as it would shoot saws depending on where you last were, kind of like homing missiles. The ending was very emotional as well, with me shedding a few tears. Level 84 was Demon Park but easy, which had very bad gameplay. Instead of nerfing the level, the creator just removed chunks of the level. If this is called nerfing, then this is Nerf Slaughterhouse. Have fun. In level 85, I was offered a blue and red pill. The blue pill was lazy ah, and the red pill was cool dude. I obviously took the cool dude path, which I wouldn't regret, as the top path was getting absolutely smoked. Level 86 would be another quiz level, except I didn't know the language, so I just had to guess. Imagine getting into this situation in real life, that must be scary. It would take a few tries, but I'd eventually end up beating this. A few attempts was significantly better than blowing an entire life on this quiz. Level 87 was Jump Now, which was very deceiving causing me to fall for it quite a few times. To my disappointment, I realized that this level was auto, and even worse, a copy. But it wouldn't end there, as I would end up rolling in insane, the hardest difficulty I can do, as demons can't be rated without a star. This was worse however, as there could be a copy of Silent Club Step here, just sitting there. I had to use my only life carefully. Level 88 would be a relatively easy ship challenge that increased in difficulty. Despite that, I was able to beat it in one attempt, unlike level 89. Level 89 would be Stereo Buff, a buff of Stereo Madness. Upon seeing this level, I knew it could be my last possible life. After this, if I couldn't beat a level, this challenge was over. I quickly noticed that you could barely skip this section as the wave, which would let you get through the entire beginning. Then you would approach this area where you'd have to spam faster than the speed of light. This ship part would be easier as the player was now a mini wave, but it wouldn't entirely end there. Now, due to the player being mini, it's barely possible to squeeze beneath the cube portal. But trust me, it is way harder than it looks. If you pulled this off, however, the rest of the level would be free. But unfortunately, no matter how hard I tried to get these two skips consistently, I just couldn't and gave up. I hadn't lost the challenge just yet, but had I stumbled across something marginally difficult, it could be the end of me. After this nightmarish set of disasters, I was finally given a break with level 90, which I would accidentally beat first try, something that completely caught me off guard. Trust me, this should not be rated insane. In level 91, I would have to play Jumper, upside down which was very trippy, making it very tempting to just flip my monitor upside down. Fortunately, I would end up beating the level, only taking me 3 attempts. Level 92 was cube space travel, which gave me very sour memories of Square Adventure. Fortunately, the level had solid gameplay, sparing me a heart attack. Level 93 was finger dash, but breaking bad. That's all there is to say. Level 94 was Theory of Everything 3, which I'm surprised isn't in the game yet. 
Fortunately though, the level did it better than the official levels will ever do it, with stunning visuals. I was actually very stressed towards the end due to the extremely awkward gameplay, but I was able to pull through in one attempt. In level 95, we're thrown into I Love Phobos V2, which is a wrong opinion. The wave is very weird, and I can name a million places I should have died to, but didn't. Level 96 was the calm before the storm. Despite being a very simple level, there's something so charming about new creators. I miss when I went to a level and figured out for the first time on how to use a move trigger or even the color trigger. Those kinds of movements aren't something you can just recreate. Level 97 was years but super buffed, but somehow I was able to beat this first try. 360 FPS really does something to you, I swear. Level 98 was named Green, and unlike what the description claims, this level isn't relaxing in the slightest. Despite only being a couple seconds long, this wave was brutal. Level 99 began with this cube, which really reminded me of this part in Acropolis. It's short-lived however, as then it turned into Arcturus. And for my final level, I was worried, and realistically it could be anything. It could range from a completely free level to something like Ballistic Whistly. With infinite possibilities, I opened the level. There's something so fitting about the final level being a copy of a relatively unknown rated level about Space K hacking. That combination is unreal. Throughout the level, different hacks are enabled, which is such a clever way to nod to the situation. Instead of doing what everyone else does, that being naming an unrelated level to a popular thing for downloads. Playing 100 recent levels was brutal, but getting every single achievement in this game in only 100 hours was far more difficult. Go check out the video, and as always, thanks for watching. Peace.